Today is all about India ink using a skull for a subject matter. You will need India ink, a variety of brushes, Bristol or watercolor paper, and a reference image of a skull of your choice. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly tutorial. I printed out a photograph of a skull that I had in my classroom, and what I'm doing now is called value mapping. In order to be successful with your value mapping, you want to do your India ink value scale first. That way you fully understand how dark and light you can create your grays because you're going to be using a variety of dark, light, and medium grays. Click the link above to follow my step-by-step -step directions to create a value scale that will really help you with this painting. I am labeling my values with five being the darkest, four, three, two, one, and zero being white. And I'm starting by labeling what I see as the darkest values. Obviously the background's really dark, and then there's a really dark shadow inside the eye sockets, inside the nose, parts of the cheekbone, and then those little tiny shadows in between each tooth area. Keep in mind that although there is a really dark value, it's not just black, there's a lot of dark and medium grays in those areas as well. The skull is mostly white, but there's also a lot of faint values as well. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit here as I continue mapping out using my value scale where I see each number value. This does take practice, but as you paint and as you look, just doing this exercise first will help you get an accurate painting. Next, I'm using blue painter's tape to create a border around all four edges of my square piece of Bristol board. All of my materials are in the description box if you're interested in what I'm using in my classroom. If you don't have artist tape, you can also use masking tape. Just make sure that you put the masking tape on your jeans, um, on your sweatshirt or whatever you're wearing so it's not so sticky that it tears the paper. Now that I have my Bristol prepared, I'm going to sketch the skull that I printed out. Now you could do this from direct observation and having your skull in front of you is really important. However, if you're new to value, a good idea is to take a photograph. That way you can change it to black and white using an app on your phone. Like for example, if you're using an iPhone, you just go into the settings and you change it to black and white. Then that makes it really easy to see the value. Since that's what I'm focusing on here is really nailing those areas of dark and light. That's the way I am doing it. Keep in mind that this is a painting, not a photograph. I am not a scientist or a doctor who's trying to accurately describe what a skull looks like. Um, I am simply creating a work of art that shows value, that's spooky, and I just love a skull for subject matter. They can be really cute and really funny looking, but also kind of scary at the same time. So I'm just freehanding this, paying attention to the shapes that I see, how they're organized, and I did a three quarter view, but you could take a photograph of your skull any direction. Keep in mind, you could also do this from a photograph you find on the internet, but who took the picture? Is it a copyright image? And are you using this to make money or for an AP college level portfolio? As an art student or a young artist or just making art at home, these are always important questions to ask yourself. You don't wanna steal from other artists without giving them credit. So it's always best to take your own photographs if possible, or at least change them by 25%, making sure to follow copyright laws, especially if you plan on selling this or using it in a portfolio. As you're sketching, pay attention to the large shapes, the small shapes, and everything in between, also looking at value as you map it. So not only are you sketching the shapes that you see, you are drawing out the little shadows and the little areas of light and dark. So this should be the second time you've looked at value, and although I'm not gonna map it directly on my Bristol, I'm just using my photograph to have like those dark and light areas, you could lightly go in and map it on your final paper. Just make sure you erase it or draw it so lightly that you won't see it through your ink. The skull I'm using came from a Halloween store. It's not really that accurate to what a human skull looks like entirely, but I'm trying to get it right with that cheekbone on the side, getting the jawbone correct and the shape uh, and the roundness of the skull on the back. Once you have your sketch finished, it is time for ink. And I always recommend starting with your lightest values first. It is very tempting to jump straight into that darkest ink, but I'm going to layer my values very slowly and patiently because you can't erase ink, but you can layer to create more dark areas. So I'm gonna do my light areas, and I'm even going to do those dark areas that I know are gonna be really dark and black, but I'm gonna do them light first. 
So as you can see, I'm going with a very thin layer of pretty much my lightest gray. With ink, I like to layer and build those values up. It is a beginner's mistake to go right to the darkest value first and then you have nowhere to go. Um, so think of it like shading with the pencil. You're kind of blocking everything in. You can always go in and darken it, but unlike a pencil, there is no eraser. So I'm looking at my um, my photograph and I'm just going in to where those shadows are and those dark areas and mapping them out lightly first. I will be referencing my photograph and my value scale the whole time I'm painting. Never just rely on what's inside your head. No offense, your brain is beautiful, but having something that you're doing observationally is a strength as an artist. I'm not saying that painting from imagination or making things up isn't also an important skill, but if you're really trying to do a technique like ink and you're really focusing on creating value and looking at an object, um, having that object in front of you at all times and the value scale you're practicing, um, that is fundamental to the success of your drawing. Um, and if you're just kind of doing it willy-nilly, that's fine too. But for my students, um, I want them to practice really looking at what they're creating and really analyzing the values that they see and creating those dark to medium and light values with control of their brush. Now that I have one layer, I'm gonna layer again and get a little bit more dark with those values. Still not going jet black, not even close, barely at my medium level three uh, value. So I'm just kind of using a very small round brush. I prefer a brush with a point. It depends on what you're interested in, but definitely you want a small brush for the subject matter because of all those small little areas, especially the teeth. And I'm doing a second layer only on the darkest parts. So if you zoom in closely to the photograph, you can see that even in the eye socket, it is nowhere near just one value. I know that's a little blurry because that's an extreme zoom in, but look at how dark it is at the top and then it fades to a medium light and then finally a white value around the edges. I'm going to layer again, this time focusing on the dark to medium grays. Um, you can see there that it adds a lot more depth and the darkest values are more towards the top of the eye socket in this example. Using a quality paper is really important with ink because of all the layering that you are going to be doing. I prefer a smooth Bristol, um, a smooth watercolor paper would work, anything that you can layer on top of with a water-based material. So quality of paper is key, and again, my materials are in the description box. So I'm just continuing the process of overlapping in small areas to create that darker value on top of the light and medium values I've already done. Keep in mind, the skull is very white, so there's a lot of details that I'm not going to be painting because um, with India ink, much like watercolor, you're not using white, you're leaving the paper white to create those lightest areas. Still building up those eye areas, and now I'm doing the nose, where the nose kind of goes into the skull between the eyes. This is a little bit exaggerated. Like I said, this is a skull that I got at a Halloween store, so it's not exactly like you wouldn't have it in your doctor's office as like an example of what the human skull looks like, which I think is kind of fun. This isn't meant to be, like I said before, like a page in a biology textbook, um, but I am wanting it to have a realism to it. So although I'm painting kind of loose and it's not like I took out a ruler and measured everything, um, I still want to have some realism. What I'm really enjoying right now are the teeth. Look at that darker shadow and how that makes the white value of the teeth pop. I was scared to do them at first just because there's so much detail, but it really gives the skull character. You guessed it, I am layering again with my small brush and now I'm really committing to those darkest darks and then black will be last. I like to do that once the ink dries so that each value kind of has its own presence and then I can layer a darker one on top without the water getting into the way. So sometimes I do an area at a time, let the water kind of swim around with the ink, then dry, then I go back in uh, to overlap those darkest values. That's why value mapping is important. We're not just painting solid eye sockets. We're really paying attention to the texture and the values created in each of these um, areas. Now, my background is very dark, so once I get to that, that's gonna really make this come to life because um, right now you just have very few detail in the skull and then like a lot of white space. So I promise once the black background gets in there, it's gonna really come to life. I'm going to pick up the pace of the video here since I'm overlapping the same areas again and again because I'm just itching to get that background in. So if you're wondering why I'm going so fast, it's because I sped this up twice the speed I painted it in real life. Okay, background time, and I'm gonna use a completely different technique, and I'm going to create washes of color. Notice I'm using a much larger brush, then I'm gonna dab some pure ink into that large wash and let it swim around. So satisfying, let me zoom in. This is really fun, and I feel like I can let go and have less 
control because the background just needs to be darker than the skull. It doesn't have to look just like the photograph. I just propped it up against a black uh, piece of paper. So I can really kind of play around with this. I know I want it darker. I know I want some value, not solid black. And I want it to enhance the skull without distracting from all the detail I plan to put into it. So this technique for the win. I'm adding more water. You can see that there's a little bit more ink on the brush um, and that's kind of spreading into it, which is totally fine with me because I'm just going to dab in that pure India ink again. And notice I'm doing small areas because the water dries and it absorbs into the paper. So as you can see there, it's not spreading as much. So I want to kind of not do the whole thing at first. I'm just doing small areas so I can really control when the paint dries. Look how nice that dark area looks against the chin. I'm gonna go ahead and speed the video up here since I'm repeating these steps and it's kind of fun to watch the ink go at a faster pace. Um, I am using my brush to kind of spread the ink out a little bit because the dots are pretty, but they also are so detailed they might take away from some of the detail of the skull itself. But this is a really fun way to kind of fill this darker space down and around the skull and then pulling your brush into uh, the ink into the water to create areas of light and dark. I'm going to continue playing around with this technique, adding some areas of dark, adding more pools of water, and just playing around with texture. And again, the background needs to be the darkest because I want all of the details of the skull, and the skull in this photograph is white. Now, if you look at a skull in real life, it has kind of like a light brown, lots of tints of yellow to it. But for these purposes of ink, we're doing black and white, and I'm just kind of filling in the background with some fun textures that I will go back to. So I'm going to end up going back to this and, you know, making it exactly the way I want it once I have all the details of the skull complete. Speaking of details, I'm going back with my smaller brush and now that I have a background mapped in, can really pay attention to all the small lines, all the small details and those light washes of lighter values. So I'm really just looking at my photograph and trying to capture the lights and darks, the areas that are darker and of course, any small little detail that makes a skull a skull. I could spend forever on these teeth. A strategy that really works for me is stepping away from a work of art overnight and coming back to it with fresh eyes. So if you feel like you've looked at the same work of art and there's not much to do, hang it up somewhere so that when you walk in a room, um, either hours later or on a different day, you'll see things that you didn't notice the first time. Also, applying ink to a dry surface is really helpful too. So if you're at the point where you're not sure what to do, um, that's a really good strategy. And keep in mind, I am not outlining anything. So there's no light line that's drawn around a whole, the whole skull. There's no line that's drawn around each tooth. So make sure when you're using your ink that you're paying attention to those shapes of light and dark and not thinking so much what lines there are in outlining. Outlining is something that young artists are very tempted to do. Um, as humans, we want things to make sense and be clear cut. And so for us, outlining a shape or an area just gives us this sense of organization that just doesn't happen in a natural subject typically. I want to pay a little bit more attention here to the edges of my skull, particularly the jawline. Looking at my photograph, I see it's not just pure white, but there is like a small little shadow down across the bottom. That's gonna also help it blend into the background a little bit more naturally. If you feel very in control, sometimes I like to do washes directly onto the skull itself or the subject and not just mix everything in the palette. But you have to kind of trust yourself to know how much water is on your brush and so it's not too dark or too light. Worst case scenario, you just blot it with a paper towel. I can see that I need to darken that little shadow in between the nose or I'm sorry, in between the eyes above the nose to um, really enhance the depth of the skull. And again, the skull is not like a natural human skull. It has a little bit of a primitive quality to it, but I think that's really fun, especially for the spooky subject matter I'm going for. Once that dries a little bit, I'll take my brush again and then pull the values um, to kind of blend it. So think if you were using a pencil, it's like kind of shading. You're taking a dark area and pulling it so it's still dark, but it's spread out and not quite so stark. Now that my background has dried, I'm going to make it a little darker. I do love the variety of grays I created. I think it's lovely, but I want the punchiness of the skull, that contrast of dark and light to be very effective. So I'm using my big brush again and kind of fanning out a darker value around the edges of the left-hand side of the skull. Remember, I'm still wanting to capture a variety of dark values and not just painting the whole thing solid black. So overlapping and layering, just like I did in the skull itself, is really important. Um, it just doesn't matter as much because there's no defined background, but I do want it to have the illusion of light resting on a surface. So I'm gonna make it a little bit darker kind of on the outer edges of where the skull would be resting on a table or wherever the skull would be hanging out. 
sometimes it's easy to forget the background and just let it be, but you always wanna develop the background of whatever um, subject you're creating and not save it for last because the development of the background is just as important as the subject of your work of art. As I was developing the background, I thought to myself, what would happen if I did a little ink splatter and made a splatter happen on my skull? So I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna tap it over a larger one. Um, and it made some really fun, interesting areas. There's not splatter in the actual photograph, but I thought this could be a good way to bring the skull to life. I'm taking a paper towel and blotting off the areas that I thought were a little too heavy handed. Um, and then I'm softening it like you saw me do before. Before it dries, just take a clean brush and spread it out to have a more controlled effect. Another tool that's fun to use is a wooden skewer, like a bamboo shish kebab stick, or you could use nibs. If you have a pen with nibs, you can dip it in the ink, but this is public school, so I give my students bamboo skewers because they're cheaper and easier to come by, and so you can do a lot of nice line work. So I'm looking at the eye sockets, the kind of emphasized area of the skull. Instead of using my brush, I'm playing around with some line work with that, just to give it a really clean, um, a really controlled edge that the brush can sometimes be difficult to achieve. Again, I'm not outlining, so you don't see me outlining each tooth or like the shape of the eye, but this is a fun way to create a little bit of control within your work of art, and it's just really fun. I am trying to be really picky with that eye socket because really the eyes are kind of the focal point. Sure, the teeth really stand out too, but I feel like I can still see my pencil marks, and carefully with my small brush, I'm trying to play around with some of those dark and medium highlights because I'm not outlining, as you've heard me say a million times, but I want the skull to be, uh, the eye socket to be really developed and really have that 3D effect. Now that the background is dry again, I'm going to apply another layer. I'm not erasing all those beautiful dark grays I created, but really get, getting a nice black value um, and being picky about where that darkest shadow is. Since you've seen me do that three times, I sped that up and now I'm doing even more detail work. Again, walking away from a work of art and coming back to it can give you um, a little bit of space and you can see things that maybe you missed and maybe I'm just obsessive and going over some areas again and again, but I feel like with ink, um, it's just a great way to create that really beautiful um, development of your values, which is the whole point of this work of art. A fun step is adding a metallic accent color. And I have silver and gold, and I'll put the link to the brand of inks I'm using. This is a nicer, more expensive ink. You can see it in my palette there. And I'm going to use a clean brush because I don't want it to dilute that nice silver with um, the black ink. And I'm gonna load up my smaller brush with ink and then tap it with the larger brush. This is really fun in the background. It gives it kind of a galaxy vibe. Um, and since there's so much development in the skull itself, I'm not worried about it because what I'll just do before the ink dries is go back and kind of push that ink around. Let's look at the gold. That's a really nice accent because it's different from silver. Silver kind of matches the color scheme and gold gives it a really fun accent that's harmonious but gives it a little bit more visual interest. Before the ink dries, I'm going to take ink on my brush and just soften those areas. There was a lot of silver in the eye and I wanted that shadow to keep um, keep that really nice dark contrast. So I'm just going over some of that splatter a little bit because I want it to be harmonious, but I also don't want it to overtake some of those darker areas that you saw me spend so much time developing. Inside the eye sockets, inside the nose, some of the shadows of the teeth, the splatter really gives it a really fun, harmonious uh, effect. It's not true to the photograph or true to natural realism, but who cares? It's lots of fun. It fits the subject matter, and I just think it gives the artwork a little bit more visual interest. A paper towel is also a great tool for that as well. Okay, she's all dry and I think we're done. So my favorite part is removing the tape. You can see that nice edge is really nice going around all four sides. Careful not to tear the bristle, even though painter's tape is designed for this. Finishing touch here, taking off the last strip, and voila, all done. An India ink skull exploring value. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more India ink tutorials, check these out. Find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore Machado to see what my students are up to in my classroom. And my website, thatartteacher.com, has full-length lesson plans, rubrics, and student examples.